Welcome to the Glen Fiddich Challenges Club podcast. What started in a billboard whiskey bar in Johannesburg now comes to you from the KZN shoreline. The Glen Fiddich Challenges Club is a space of shared opinion, views and perspectives of success brought to you by Glen Fiddich, the world's most awarded single malt scotch whiskey. For each episode, we curate a theme discussion with some of South Africa's most brilliant minds, a selection of change makers and visionaries in a forum designed to inspire, equip and motivate the next generation. Welcome to the Challengers Club. Welcome to the Challengers Club. I'm very happy to be your host for tonight in uh, another engaging discussion on, you know, amongst many, the pillars that are important in your journey of success or your journey to success. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, um, we've been looking at a couple of themes that are important themes in uh, your journey, your personal journey, your journey through your life as a business person or your journey through life in general. And uh, I suppose the beauty of it all is that everybody has their own unique story of how they got to where they are. Now, the beauty about being a challenger is that you are a maverick. You're a person who feels that it's never enough, even though you may have achieved a lot and there's always something more to achieve. And I suppose that is exactly the essence and the spirit of what Len Fiddich is all about. And uh, when you look at just some of the themes we've covered over the weeks, it really embodies just that, the essence of what Mavericks and Challenges are all about. So tonight we're going to be looking at the power of taking smart risks, especially when you consider that you cannot achieve anything without trying something. And uh, when we talk about risks, we often talk about the different types of risks. And I would imagine the process involved in taking the risk. There's always that moment before the risk gets taken. Is it calculated? Is it thought? Is it intuition? What is it? And I think everybody in this room has a story to tell about that. Also considering that a lot of you here um, have different backgrounds and within that, you've had your own personal journeys of switching from one thing to the next. So I'm very excited to hear more about that. So um, as we proceed with this conversation, I'd like us to do a quick introduction around the table so that we can make clear who is here with us right now. So I will start with uh, you, sir. Quick introduction. Um, my name is Samuel Pisani and I'm working at Afrotainment as a PR and admin and artist manage manager. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Tabo Mnisi, also known as DJ Touch of Soul. I am a club DJ and I'm basically in the entertainment scene. I am also a businessman in the manufacturing space. I own a brand that's selling in stores and I also look into be in eventing and doing events. Good evening, guys. The name, my name is Setu Sidzamba. I'm a perfumer and the owner of a perfume manufacturing and distribution company called Wa Azania Aroma. Everybody, my name is Grant Gavin. I'm a property business owner. I'm also an international speaker and a business coach, and I founded the Durban Entrepreneurs Club. That's me. Good evening, everyone. My name is Baba Alwa Dube. I am the founder of Swift Cleaning Chemicals and our brand is Swift Care. Evening everyone, my name is Sean. I represent Open Plan Studio, co-working space, shared office, creative hub in Durban. Thanks. Good evening, I'm Nindia. I'm an artist and architect and um, I'm based in Durban, currently practicing as an artist. Evening, honorable comrades. Um, Nikhil Trickham, um, director and founder of NT Design Studio, visual artist, architect, and illustrator. Greeting everyone, my name is Gwanda Khatebe and I'm a stand-up comedian. Um, greetings everyone, I'm Bilo Ntlendromo here, currently um, an honors student in PA Tourism, but I'm also an aspiring entrepreneur. You don't know me yet, but in the next five years, you'll definitely know, definitely know who I am. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sunny Bona, good evening. This is Senzo Shezi, all the way from Afrotainment. I'm one of the directors at Afrotainment. Thank you. Uh, Lutando Jazz Tibini, um, the national brand ambassador for Claim Fidic. Wonderful stuff. So now that we've got the intros out the way, let's talk about, I think from a, a personal point of view, some of the risks that have been taken by you along the journey. Now, the thing about it is, 
a risk is, is always about exposing yourself to some sort of danger, right? Um, or some sort of situation that you may or may not be familiar with. Now, I would imagine that if you're trying to achieve something, you've obviously got to come up with some sort of plan that you'd like to implement in getting there. Sometimes the plan is clear, sometimes it is not clear. So as we start this conversation, let's pick it up from that point. I'll start with uh, Impiluente because he said we'll remember the name. So we might as well start that journey. From your own personal perspective, let's talk about the process of taking a risk. Is there something that happens before you make a decision about what to do next, or is it just impulsive in that moment you go for it? Uh, well, for me, from what I can speak uh, about, from my, um, for, what, for what I've been through, for me, like, as much as when you risk, I feel like the, with me, I have to have a bit of uh, sense, so to say, behind the risk that I'm taking. So to say that you don't take like a leap of faith without knowing like how deep the cliff is or whatever. I feel like I have to take a few steps to know like, is this risk really, really, really worth it? And then most of the time I go with my intuition because I feel like in business, that's all. That's what it's more, most it's all about. Not just in business in general, but I feel like in life, we don't, we don't have a manual to how to live. You just live by what you, what you think is right and what you believe in and what you think will work for you going forward. So that's how I take my approach in terms of how I take a risk. I mean, Baba, I want to bring you in here, especially because you have a very interesting story. When it comes to the idea of taking a risk, I mean, you surely have to have a sense that whatever you're doing is going to work. Is it, is it a clear sense or is, it, is there still a level of uncertainty when you're taking that risk of whether it's actually going to work or not? I believe um, it is never clear. Hence, it's taking the risk because you're not sure. So it is about using your intuition and the knowledge that you have and the experience that you also have and also doing a little bit of research on what you are about to embark on. As he has already mentioned, there's nothing that is cast in stone that in order for you to be here, you need to do this and that. There are manuals on seven steps on how to be a successful business person, but it never happens the way that it is written on a textbook or somewhere on scribes. It is about you going through the journey, experiencing the journey and sharing your journey. So I always say you write it down. You say, this is what I want to achieve. How do I go about it? You find people that have been through the road or the journey that you're about to embark on everyone has a different story to tell. So it is about working hard. Nothing comes easy. You must work hard. And also, when you look at the next person, they might be where they are today, but they had to go through their a own personal journey. journey. Sure. And they, they, sure. they've experienced different challenges. The challenges that we experience are not the same. Setu has his hand up. Um, I'm going to come to Sean after that. You want to respond to what she's saying? Um, yes, yes, partially and as well as to add on. I, I think risk is, is closely married with fear as well. And my definition of fear is as a man-made system of the unknown because there's this unknown uncertainty. It's, it's man-made. I mean, fear is man-made. Um, but equally, you can create a condition yourself as well where you can cushion yourself from such a risk or from such a fear. What I do is when I partake into a risk is I create a condition where I start deriving the future successes of that particular risk in the now moment. And what's beautiful about those future successes as well is now the risk and the challenge becomes no longer tedious. It becomes an exercise. It becomes a case study. Um, when you reach um, a stumbling block, it's no longer a challenge per se, but now it becomes crucial lessons that will aid in terms of you moving forward. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sean, I'll bring it in here. The point of taking these risks, I mean, they've got to yield some sort of benefit. Otherwise, why are we doing it? Um, and I don't know if risks are always going to pay off in the end. What has been your experience? It's worth the rush. I mean, it's, uh, it's adrenaline. It's, it's your passion, what drives you every day. I mean, I think there's a level of, of honesty that, that comes with it as well. It's like you, you have to expose yourself. 
you know, to everything. So put yourself out there, you know, like, you know, get, get through those, those comfort zones and, and like just experience it. That's the only way to grow, you know, so, so take a risk. It's, um, it's worth it. I would imagine that, uh, Nindia, you have a very interesting story around the, the things that Sean are talking about around comfort zones and, you know, going for it. Um, just your own personal story around some of those realities around taking risks having to step outside the norm, sometimes the whole world having to change? So for me, I had a very difficult childhood where my family environment wasn't very safe and it was about survival. And I knew that something that I've been realizing in the past few days that what am I chasing? What am I actually looking for? And it's actual freedom. It's freedom. That's what I'm looking for. It's freedom. I want to wake up knowing I want to, I can do whatever I want that day. I, I have my coffee, whatever time. I spend time with my dog. I go to my studio whenever I want to. If I can't, I have stuff in, the stu- in, in my leather workshop. I have to do other things. And um, I've learned this the hard way. And it's been a very hard journey because I suffer from depression and I... I'm much better now, but I had really bad days where I was my savior and my also the person who would hurt myself. And um, But I've realized that I've got nothing to be scared of because I've seen the worst, I've been through the worst, and I've always run away from what didn't feel comfortable. And to be able to do that, it was all risk. And it was like for six months, my parents didn't know what I was studying. And I changed my degree. I was doing architectural all of a sudden. I couldn't tell my father because he'll tell me to go back home. What are you doing, you know? And uh, I had to get my uncle involved, my head of department involved, telling them, please write me a letter so that I can present it to my father to explain why I changed my degree. And it was all risk. I lived with anxiety every day. Um, but today I'm so happy. And it's been... I've learned so much from it. And uh, when you take a risk, you never know if it's gonna work out or not. It might not, it might well work out. But every road that you take, every decision that you take is the right decision. Tabo, um, you wanted to make a point on what you were saying as well. Well, there's something that you said that touched me um, about why we do what we do, you know? And um, what um, made me raise my hand was, um, I remember a point where I came to Durban to study, but music has always been my passion, you know. But at some point, my parents didn't understand the whole DJing thing. I come from a Christian background. Um, My family is very, you know, my dad is a pastor, you know, my mom, you know. So they're like, what is this whole DJing thing that you're telling us about? You know, what is this thing that you're doing? But then at some point, I had to take a stand and be like, um, listen, I'm making these small moves and they are working, you know? I'm winning competitions, I'm doing this, it's working and I love it. Yet I'm studying. So I did my degree, um, I finished it, I completed it, I went to my master's degree. And then at some point, I came to them and gave them the documents. It's like, here are your papers. Can I please be given a chance? Because the last thing I want, I was honest with myself, I was, the last thing I want is to live in and sit in an office and be frustrated of what could have been, especially based on what I've been seeing has been happening, which is a movement. So can I please be given a chance to do what I really love doing? Can I please take that risk to just go to Durban? I'll be out of your course. I'll live by myself. I'll hustle. Can I just go to Durban and do what I want to do and just let it at least come to an end and then I can come back and pick up my degrees and go to an office? And I haven't been back. (laughs) I'm still leaving, you know. What uh, I'm as Nindia said, sometimes the decisions you made were the right decisions. Um, but sometimes I wonder. I mean, Grant, sometimes we, we make bad decisions. And maybe sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we'd rather not have been, quagmires, you name it. So, how do we deal with this fear thing around these decisions that we make that are sometimes big decisions in life? Yeah, absolutely. Well, a couple of people have mentioned it already. And people hold back on taking risks because of fears. And fears are, are self-made. You know, as human beings, we're not a product of our behaviors. We're actually a product of our internal state, our past conditioning, you know, how we've been brought up. And every one of us has a unique upbringing and, and, and we have unique 
past conditioning due to where we've grown up and where we've lived. But but fears are real in, in our own minds. But unfortunately, there are going to come times when you, you do take a risk and you're going to make a mistake and you're not going to get the result that you want. But I mean, fundamentally, if you don't take risks, you don't move forward. If we stay in a safe place, if we stay in a comfortable place, which is what our brain actually programs us to do, we're never going to move forward and progress and move to a new level of growth. So yeah, just understanding why we have these fears and insecurities and learning about who we are as individuals and people, um, that's the first step, is, is knowing who we are, what we want, what's going to make us happy, and then making choices and finding different paths until we, we align with the path that's right for us in our life. And, and what's the worst thing that can happen? If you take a risk and it doesn't work out, and if it's a calculated risk, well, what, what, take, what is that? What is this calculated risk? Because there are <laughs> different types of risks. What, what is, is there a calculator that if you add this and that, the yeah, answer think, will be this and you know, well, it's all worked out? I can only tell you from my experience. So for me, it's what am I prepared to lose to gain what I want to gain? So a calculated risk is, am I prepared to lose X, Y, or Z, whether it's relationships, money? I mean, take the most fundamental risk that a man takes. You've got a friend who's a girl and you want to ask out on a date or you want her to be your romantic partner. Are you prepared to lose her as a friend to, 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 to pursue her as a romantic partner? You know, if you wanted that strongly and you're prepared that she might turn around and go, well, no, but I'm, I can't, you know, you know, financially, you have a pot of money. Am I prepared to risk all this money that's there for my family or my kids' studies? Am I prepared to lose that because I believe so wholeheartedly in that reward? That's calculated, you know. What am I prepared to lose in order to gain that? Sure. I wonder if we all think like that. Uh, Gwanda, I'll bring you in here. Maybe you have a different sort of perspective Perhaps also considering that in the world of comedy, which is where you are, maybe the game is slightly different to Grant's world. So, you know, the, that calculated risk, is there such a thing in your space? Can you say that the risk you took to follow your dreams was a calculated one? I wouldn't say it was a calculated one. It was mostly driven by love. So if uh, the emotion of love for the craft is that big, so you don't really think about the risk, okay, this might happen, this might not happen. But if, if, if it's driven by love, it, you, are, you, are, you are more than willing to go the extra mile. So for me, deciding to pursue uh, the path of comedy, uh, it, was, it was mostly for, for the love of the craft. So I didn't go, okay, this might work, this might not work. I didn't even, all of that was shut out because the love for the craft is that much. So to say you're going to go on stage and make people laugh, that's a huge risk. It could go either way. Sure. And sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it works. But it's a, it's a risk you continuously live with. Yeah, and, and I think for me, the persistence becomes key. But it seems there's some sort of cost here, um, sometimes financial and sometimes, you know, reputation, whatever the story is, when taking risks. Ikiel, in your experiences, do you think about those, those, those costs what you stand to lose or, you know, what you stand to to gain in, in taking risks. Um, yeah, definitely. How, how do you not, you know? Uh, I, I, think, I think where you come from informs how you see the financial risks and the financial opportunities. Um, if you come from means, obviously it's a, it's, a, it's a different, money is a different thing. If you don't come from means, like me, um, there's a tendency to want to hoard and therefore the risk you take, as small as it is, as perceived by bigger businesses, uh, more individuals with more means, um, it might be a massive thing. So the way I've worked around that is repackaging the idea of risk as opportunity. Risk has got a negative connotation that like, what do I stand to lose? Whereas opportunity has got a positive connotation. You say, okay, cool, here is, Here's a set of circumstances that I've been provided with or that, that I've been confronted with. Um, how I react to them and how I take them on and what I put in, whether it's assets of my own, that being f money, time, uh, whatever else, um, at the sacrifice of personal relationships, at the sacrifice of financial security, is going to inform the outcome of that thing. So if I look at it in terms of these are the potential rewards, like... Um, like what I can get out of it, what the experiential reward would be as well, then the financial risk makes sense. So the financial, the opportunity to contribute financially 
to the set of circumstances make sense. Um, so that's always helped me uh, put my hard earned money back into uh, my businesses. Everything, everything I've done so far has been self-funded. So we started with um, <laughs> nothing, yeah, with a salary really, and saying, okay, well, instead of you know, instead of getting a big place, we're going to get the dodgiest spot in the dodgiest <laughs> suburb, and whatever extra money we have, we're going to buy a little bit of resources. And I remember selling one item, and you know that being. And taking the risk to go out and buy a whole hide of leather or go and buy some fancy paper so that I can do a beautiful piece of art and buy beautiful ink. That was a risk at the time because that thousand rand was a lot of money at that time. Yeah. Um, but the opportunity to make that sale, the opportunity to have a more beautiful product, the opportunity to have something um, that goes beyond just presentable. Yeah. Um, was too much not to take the risk. Absolutely. So, so yeah. the opportunity for you is the driving force. Mm. W yeah. Where does background fall in all of this okay. risk-taking um, exercise? Okay, so here's my view, especially when I listen to everyone who's here. A lot of the risks that we've taken are based upon the upbringing that we have. So the upbringing that we have has an influence on the type of risk that you're going to take further. Yes, our parents take us to these schools or take us to these new universities, um, but at the end of the day, we, we tend to live their dream rather than us coming out and, and saying, this is what I want to do. But you need a risk in order for you to make that leap because now you're thinking all the financial burden that you've actually built around your parents. Is it really worth it? So is it really going to work out? But now the question always comes up. With every risk, you need to understand failure. If you don't understand failure, then it's not a risk. It's just something that you just jumped into. So in order for you to understand what taking a risk is, you need to understand failure that, I mean, we always get told about how many businesses have failed on the first year and the second year and the third year, etc. But it's taking that leap of faith, knowing that you are going to fail at some point or you're not going to fail at some point. So hence the calculated risk, um, losing friends, losing um, some a bit of assets, etc., 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 relationship. But at the end of the day, if you don't understand what risk is, it means that you don't understand what failure is. Mm. So, so there's this thing that people talk about, you know, the gut feel. It's, it's, in, it's, in, it's in my gut. I can feel it. You know, it's... I, I don't know how, how tangible that is. Uh, Babala, do you have, like, tangible examples that have yielded, uh, yielded benefit when you say to yourself, you know, my gut feel just said, this is where I need to go. Is there something tangible that you can point out to when it comes to this gut feel idea? Um, you know a gut feel, sometimes it can take you to the right direction. Sometimes it can take you to the other direction. I don't want to say wrong direction, but... It, you will just say another. <laughs> another. <laughs> sure. I, 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 another direction. I believe all of us that are sitting on this table, we have a passion. And that passion drives us. And that drive goes with the gut feel that this thing is going to work. Let me put work into it. Let me put an effort into it. Because if you sit and you expect it to happen, it's not going to happen like that. You need to put in time. You need to make a lot of sacrifices. And you need to see it through whether it comes out the way that you want it to or not. Mm. I suppose that's the learning um, theme that, that is quite consistent around the room. I mean, Grant, the other thing is, you know, gut feel around people as well, right? Um, and you, you, you deal a lot with, with people, you know, developing people and that. And that also. In your space, you know, is there room for gut feel when you're dealing with people at that level? Absolutely. But I think it also comes with self-development and self-awareness. You know, if you are confident in who you are and how you want to live your life and you're confident that you're living... In, in leading towards the right direction in your life and you can shut your mind off to all the disturbances and noise that comes there you, you start becoming more in tune with yourself and 
then when you mention it yourself and you quieten your mind, your intuition gets louder and stronger. Can we also talk about persistence? Uh, it kind of came up earlier, but I want to look at it because, you know, one of the things is you take the risk, maybe it doesn't work the first time. Uh, like Baba Lo said, you keep trying, but you keep trying for how long? And at what point is there ever a point where you feel, well, this risk is taking me nowhere. Maybe I need to jump ship because I'm potentially losing out on whatever else could be happening. So to you, you nodding, is there something that you want to say in that regard? I mean, when do you know that this risk has run its course? Let's try something different. Uh, I mean, for, for a person like myself who grew up in Soweto, um, the only survival kid was taking a risk. Um, so my risk appetite is on another level, in, in honesty, to a point where I'm not even sure whether am I taking a risk or am I being sensible in what I'm doing. You know, I'm not sure whether you, you understand what I mean. <laughs> was growing up, um, you know, going to school, you're not given, given any uh, money for food. I had to hustle at school, look, that is VP, that's a risk on its own because it's gambling. So from a very young age, we were taught, you know, to be risk takers to a point where I really have, have, have reached the max of, 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 of being a risk taker. But what's important is even the persistency in risk taking, you know, because with the risk taking, um, it allows an opportunity for self-mastery as well. Because this thing called life, you can never read a book by Umo. Umo has got his own individual life, his own individual challenges, but you need to master your own life. But for you to master your own life, you need to be, you know, you need to throw yourself in the pool of risk taking every day to a point whereby you get to identify and you get to establish who is the real say to in honesty. So risk taking, um, people who are not taking any risk are basically shortchanging themselves of the opportunity of discovering themselves. Right. So Kwanda, when you perhaps consider that, yes, there, there's great prospects in the future, you've taken this risk. I mean, surely it's also about the environment you're in, maybe even the people around you. You know, is there, is there any role that the environment you're in and the people around you play when talking about this risk taking? Uh, I would imagine some people say, yeah, go for it because maybe they think you're funny. Some say, no, leave it alone because maybe they're jealous of this talent that they've discovered you now have. So what's the role of environment and the people around you when it comes to this risk taking? I think the environment itself is very important because we are partly a production of the environments we come from, the people we are surrounded by. So if the people are negative towards what you are doing, then you might as well have a bigger fear of taking the risk and pursuing uh, with what you want to go through. Even the family environment that you come from. So if you come from a line of people that have been used to going to the, to the corporate environment, that's, that's basically how they hustle. So if you start to try and pursue something that's different, like comedy, and then it's foreign to the environment that you come from. So then people won't be, they won't vibe with it that much. Mm -hmm. So I think the environment is important, but then along, along the way, as much as when you start pursuing what you love, you will meet the people that will, will motivate you to go forward and take the risk. So then you've kind of changed your environment as well through doing what you do. So I think the environment itself is very important. Yeah. So, yeah. I think you raise a good point and it, it almost reminds me of the two people sitting next to you because they are partners in, in what they do. I mean, uh, how, how did you know, for example, uh, Nindia, that Ikil is the right person to be around? Because you don't know what's going to happen in five, ten years' time. Some people don't reveal their true colors. Some are in it for what they think is a great ride for now until they realize that it's actually a lot of hard work. Is there, is there a special ability that you need to have? It's a massive risk to, to partner with someone, I can imagine, just off the bat. So I think firstly, what anybody must do is learn who they are and understand what they are worth. And once you do that, you realize that you don't need anyone to take care of you. And you've cleared a lot of like, the kind of like urge to depend on someone and it could be the wrong person. And then you just latch onto the idea, oh, I need this person. I need to depend on this person uh, for support, emotional, whatever it is. And once I did that, I freed myself off all kind of support that I thought I needed and I found everything inside myself, the happiness, 
um, the strength and all of that. And the people around me started, the right people started coming in my life. And, um, and when I even thought about changing my degree and all of that, and Nikhil came around and he just, I had met enough horrible men <laughs> to recognize them, just like saying hello. <laughs> so I suppose the failure aspect was, was actually quite crucial in finding the right people to surround yourself with, the right yes. people to be with as well. Yes, sure, certainly. Sure, sure. Sure, Grant, you wanted to say something say, as well. was that not gut feel? <laughs> <laughs> um, you said it, you, no, it wasn't. You said well, our relationship wasn't just like I met him, it was love at first sight. You know, it was just like, it felt really good to be together and I was learning a lot from this person and when it didn't feel safe, I tapped out. And, um, you know, eventually we just kept on finding our path joining because it was meant to be and we had similar interests, we have same work ethic and he respected me, I respected him and it was very comfortable. It was a very safe relationship and I wouldn't have been married today if it wasn't for him because I imagined my life single after all the people I had met, I said, no, you know what? I, need, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want anyone to tell me what I need to be. And like I was saying earlier, my ultimate goal is freedom and I am free as a woman in this relationship. Well, that's beautiful. I mean, uh, I suppose as we look to the future, it's also about empowering those who are on the same journey, perhaps who are still way behind all of us in the room, but want the same things, you know, want to achieve um, even bigger things than what we were able to achieve. So perhaps some advice for a lot of the future challenges that are coming up the ranks. And uh, I'm going to pick on... Uh, Impiluente, because he is probably, um, he's probably under future, but also very current uh, when you look at the fact that, you know, he is a student and, and, and there's so much potential just in that. What do you say to, to somebody who is in your position right now or who's still yet to get there in terms of taking risks and, 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 and how to go about doing it? For me, like, um, out of all the knowledge that I, like, like I said in the beginning, I'm forever a humble student. It's how I was raised. Um, God blessed me enough with the, a mother who's, who, like, from the, like, from the time I can remember, recall, she always told me that she, you can be whatever you want to be in this world, so long as you just put your mind into it and you focus. And I think from, like, a young age, I've always, like, wanted to see myself and I have a clear picture of where I want to go and I've set, I've set like, certain steps on how to get there. Although along the way, they don't go according to script, but at least you have a direction and an idea of, okay, I want to go this way and that way and that way. But in my uh, experience and my time studying at, uh, at studying and being a student, one thing I've learned, which is so crucial, is who you surround yourself with. A lot of people are toxic. Like if, it's, if most of the time I used to tell people my dreams, I stopped doing that because they're not worth it. Why? Because they're gonna bash me down. If I told someone like, no man, I want to be a multimillionaire, I want to help a lot of people, I want to do A, B, C, D by doing this, they'd they be like, man, you're tripping. Like, how is that possible? <laughs> With me, like, I don't need anyone to tell me like anything. I believe in myself so much that no one can tell me that I can't do it. I know I can do it and I know I'll make it. I just have to put in the work and whatnot, whatnot. But you have to know yourself. Like, who are you? And just like you mentioned, like, uh, a lot of the times, like, a lot of people, they have this goal, be like, okay, I want to be A, B, C, D, and then you meet along other people, like, Wanda here, they be like, ah, oh, man, why are you wasting your time doing this? Come, let's try this, let's do this, do this, and then you sleep on your dreams, and, you and then you end up settling. I'm sure. not a settler. I, sure. I don't want so, to settle. so sometimes the company you keep, you need to bear in mind that as much as there may be great company, but, you know, there needs to be a limit and that person cannot take away from what you're trying to do. I think that's a very uh, sensible thing and it sounds practical. Senzi, future challenges out there who want to run things one day, manage people, run labels or whatever, what sort of advice do you have for them in this risky space that you're in right now? Um, for me, all I can say is you must always be patient, always be calm and always believe in yourself that one day 
is one day and that day it will come if you're gonna believe in yourself and trust yourself like you said that there, there, there's some environment there's some people that they're always gonna take you to the other side you can't say to the wrong side <laughs> but <laughs> you must know your way that sure. this is what i want so if you believe in yourself you can conquer anything uh babalo you you've been on the journey of conquering but you've also mentioned that you don't like to stay in one place for a while i'm sure there are millions of people out there who feel the same way who see themselves uh, partly in you so your advice to future challengers out there who share the same spirit i believe um through my own experiences that when you feel like i've overstayed my time now it's time to go and venture and discover follow follow your heart because i believe when you follow your heart then you won't have any regrets in life because you would have known that you, you would have known that i followed my heart i do not have any reservation no one stopped me no one convinced me to do otherwise even if i make a mistake i would know that it is a mistake that i made on my own i can't blame anyone else and i cannot even blame myself because i was living my life one thing that my dad has taught me is that i am responsible for myself i am responsible for my own happiness and in whatever i do i apply my mind i follow my heart i follow my passion if i am happy i move on i do it because i believe i live for the moment because whatever i'm doing right now I'm going to leave it behind. I will leave a legacy for my nieces, nephews, whoever that is in my life that I will leave behind, but I would have known that I have lived my life the way that I see suits me and the way that I see makes me happy. And in doing so, you know that some of us aspire to be to do different things. I believe if I make a positive difference to the next person. I've done my bit. And that makes me happy. And that's what it is. It's all about matters of the heart at some point and the happiness that you speak of. Samkelo, your message to future challengers, somebody wants to take the leap, the plunge, maybe they're scared, they're worried, maybe they're not prepared to take the risk, the risk that they actually should take. What is your advice for them? Um my advice would be to to believe in yourself firstly. Um set goals for yourself and what actually you working towards too. Sometimes we might not be clear at first at what we working towards too, but as the years or as time goes by, we actually see what we working towards to um come into light. So I would say believe in yourself, keep the focus, um associate yourself with people that have the same goals and have the same uh a uh, a uh, mindset as yourself. That's that's that, that's the only way of 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 getting to your dreams and actually uh 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 uh, uh getting to where you want to be in life one day. So, yeah. Tabo And what is your advice to, to pray, guys. and don't forget to pray? <laughs> ah. <laughs> what is your advice to future challengers who, you know, are as risk taking as you are? Well, most of the things have been said, but one thing that I've learned that helps a lot is to learn how to do things yourself. It is very um, crucial in the journey um, to entrepreneurship and to. um being where you want to be when you are dependent on so many people that's where the disappointment comes that's where the betrayal comes because now you will and that's where a lot of the disappointed because you'll hope that some girl will assist me through a certain opportunity but if you learn to create your own opportunities for example being a dj if you do your own events play at your own events and be the superstar at your own events then you don't worry about being booked by someone else you know what i'm saying because you get disappointed if um jazz doesn't book me for the clan fiddy party you know what i'm saying but if you learn to grow 
do things yourself. Then you cut out the the many, you know, you just cut out a lot of time wasting, waiting for opportunity. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest things that I've learned is to like really learn how to make your own poster take care of the other things because also even in an entrepreneurship environment if you don't know how to print that whatever thing that is being done then you'll be frustrated when the printer is gone you know what i'm saying but learn the job the every aspect of the job yourself so that as a leader then you can be able to direct and lead knowing what is actually being done absolutely action man uh, setu what is your advice for future challenges um, on your own experience and what you've seen and learned um yeah don't be hard at yourself you've got only yourself to depend upon give yourself a pat on the back because you've came afar um there's plenty of rivers that you've crossed uh plenty of pain that you've been through plenty of trials and tribulations that you've been through so just cheer yourself at least for once for what you've achieved and keep going um the risk especially in business is all about solving people's problems business has got nothing to do with finances the extent in which you are solving people's problem will determine the success of your business so engage with people love people be one with people be in sync with the language that is spoken by people because that's where your opportunities are at grant your advice to challengers out there who want to do great things they're prepared to take the risk but it's it's obviously more than just that what advice do you have for them yeah and i love what we just heard there um and we've spoken a lot tonight there's a lot of entrepreneurial minded and entrepreneurial spirited people in the room and you know entrepreneurs we pursue things that's what we do we we always in pursuit of something and when we get there we want to pursue the next thing we're never happy and it's always about what we want what we want don't forget about what you have and that's practicing gratitude and so that's what I said if ever you're in pursuit of something and it's not going your way if you take 5 to 10 minutes and you sit back and you actually just appreciate what you do have and even if you think you've got nothing you're alive you've got freedom and power of choice and if you make more good choices than bad choices you'll get there eventually so never forget to practice gratitude to be grateful for what you have on a very fundamental level um, and if you're alive and you're breathing you should be grateful Sean, what's your advice to future challengers who want to conquer, uh, change think, the world? I think um, I'd like to advise people to follow their own path. Um, so to expect expect a bit of a struggle through that, um, but to just push forward. You know, be yourself. Expect to be looked at strangely, treated differently, but but. Um, people will come around you know you have to you have to keep the focus through that through that through those difficult moments and you know eventually instead of becoming what other people want you to become you know you can become yourself and so i would follow your own path nindia advice to future challengers maybe those who want to leave their countries and come to 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 ours or leave ours and go to other parts of the world totally um so things are never going to be easy and uh, that's the hard truth and um to it's going to be a roller coaster it's going to be difficult but what i want to tell the people who want to follow their dream is to actually take care of themselves don't forget that they need some love along this road don't lose yourself and um take some time out do some yoga do some meditation because when you have a healthy body and you have a healthy heart you'll have a healthy mind to be the most creative you have you can be in the moment and it's keeping the balance it's very important and um yeah that's eat well exercise and work hard beautiful ikil some advice to future challengers out there value yourself like value what you create value your ideas and know your worth we often um we often value ourselves based on the narrative that society creates around us and judge ourselves according to the successes and all the perceived successes and the perceived positions of others forget all of that value yourself yeah that's all that's all i can really say wonder some advice to future challengers out there who believe they have a talent it perhaps it hasn't been tested out there 
What do you say to that person? Uh, my advice would be, uh, don't be like Bafana Bafana. <laughs> That's my advice. Don't be like Bafana Bafana. And just go for what you love, man. Go for what you love. Yeah. And play for country, as always. Um, Jess, some advice? You've, you've uh, dabbled in a number of careers. Yeah. Big risk-taking exercises. I think, I think for me, um, most important is you are the driver of your own path and that's very important number two always be prepared some people they call it luck some people they call it an opportunity at the right place at the right time so always be prepared but understand that you are the driver of your own path absolutely and uh, with that ladies and gentlemen um it brings our discussion to a close it's been a very fruitful exercise and I certainly hope that everyone in the room has taken something from this moment that we've had. Um, it's a beautiful setting, you know, the sound of the ocean in the background. I mean, I suppose Durban is not just a playground. It is the perfect ground to have such discussions. Um, so perhaps somebody out there will feel that maybe I need to step out my comfort zone. Maybe I need to take risks. And what can you achieve, quite frankly, if you don't do all of that. So thank you so much. I think once again, this is a true testament that, you know, when great minds come together, we can come up with a whole lot of wonderful ideas. Thank you very much. It um, brings the end to another fantastic session as a part of the Glenn Fiddich podcast series. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Glenn Fiddich Challenges Club podcast. Keep an eye open for more inspiring discussion from the Glen Fiddich Challengers Club, coming to a city near you. Brought to you by Glen Fiddich, the world's most awarded single malt scotch whiskey. Drink responsibly, not for persons under the age of 18.